originally from Sioux City, Iowa, but I've been a summer resident or now a permanent resident since 1947 when I was two. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, this is probably the oldest heifer that's here. This was one of their 14 foot outboard models. Most of them were built with a deck between the two seats. Uh, the owner specified that he wanted to have oar locks so when he started to fish he could row to do his trolling so to speak. The uh, I can't do not know what the original power on this boat was but in later years the last year uh, was an Evinrude Lark 35 horsepower I think it was probably from 57 or so where the boat is located in the museum as a replica of the original storage shed which was on the shore mm -hmm. of the Sorensen family home on the north side of East Oak Boji. Uh, I'm not so sure that the original shed isn't still on that property. The original summer home for Mr. Sorensen, who was a photographer from Estherville, Iowa, uh, it still stands on the on the property. It's very small. Hafer built this model through 1937. And at that time, they switched to a wider, broader stern to accommodate outboard motors. These were very, very stable boats. They rode extremely well. They were handled like a canoe. And the molds for these boats were given to an individual who had a resort on the south side of Spirit Lake. And he continued to make the wine glass model boat on into the 50s and with slight Kelly. difference in how the wine glass was constructed and that's how you tell the difference between uh, between the two manufacturers. It was obviously manufactured before 1937 because at that time the oars that were furnished to slip block your oars were very very lightweight and made it easy uh, easy to roll with um, This boat was, we discontinued building this style boat at the Second World War. Uh, a pre-war, we think, I should say, 14 foot Hafer runabout. At the, uh, prior to the war, Hafer began building small inboards. Most of these were completed as runabouts very similar to the 16-footers that were built after. The intent was to convert the 14-foot inboard into their post-war outboard model. I don't believe any of these were sold ever. The, this boat was acquired by a person by the name of Bill Tolman at the auction of the asset or the when Glenn Hafer closed the business this was acquired by him Bill Tolman. I bought this boat in probably the late 80s and have had stored it and since then I donated it to the museum uh, to show how these boats were constructed. So the hull is put together they uh, they are nailed together and the nails that are used are uh, ring shank nails and they are nailed through two and a half planks I think on six inch centers. The, if you will go to the next strip down two inches from that the nail is driven down two and a half and the next one is at the third level and is nailed down two and a half planks. Off, they're just offset every two inches, as I recall. And so the boat has got nails in it every two inches holding the hull together. And they are very, very sturdy boats. This boat is a 1947 Hafer, typical of what was constructed after the war. It's a Hafer 75 runabout. Uh, in later production, they did build a utility, which I'll show you a, a couple of examples of that here in a little bit. Um, this boat originally belonged to the 
Weatherwax family from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, they were clothiers and with outlets in Sioux City and Sioux Falls. And uh, this boat was sold out of the family probably in around 1990 or 91 and bought by Richard Jeffries. It has since, since been restored uh, to almost better than new condition. <laughs> uh, while the boats were sturdy, uh, they weren't meant to be perfect. In other words, a lot of times the original, if you look at the original hull sides, and we'll show you one a little bit later, all the nails that were clinched to the ribs kind of were indented in the wood. So this one has had a little, little extra done to it on, in its restoration. But it's open, the engine area was open, um, like you see here. They were not, no ceiling, nothing sealing the, the interior at all. Was one of the hulls that was, uh, or that was not, it was all the hulls, I should say, for the Hafers were built in 1955 or years prior. The, uh, this was one of the boats, however, that was not finished at the time of John Hafer's death. Uh, it was originally purchased from the flat plant by a person by the name of Top Tomato. And while well, uh, the decks and everything were here, the boat was un unpowered. And so the, the, the owner found an engine that he could put in it and he completed the engine installation. And if you see here, it has the more modern gray marine gauges, which were started, the, the paper started installing, I believe, in 1951. It has the single round gray marine gauge. The older boat, as we looked at, uh, previously had a split two uh, gauge panel with a gray surround on it. The, this is a utility model, and it, you could get this either in a 75 or a 90. Uh, uh, both models after 1951 is when they first started to install in the 90s. Uh, the biggest years of production for their the inboard, 16 foot inboard, was the 1947 and 48. And from speaking to Glenn Hafer, he estimated that they built about a dozen boats each of those years. After that, the sales were a little more sporadic. I mean, these boats were 750 bucks or 850 bucks. <laughs> and I think they sold like hotcakes at that time because a typical Chris Craft was over a thousand bucks by that time. It was 30, as I recall, a deluxe runabout was about 1300 or $1,500 uh, dollars at that. The upper bracket to hold the outboard rudder are these castings here. And I, I can't tell you whether they had them so they could cast more than one at a time. Uh, they're sl the below are the cavitation plates uh, that were used on the Hafers. The, this model, I'm pretty sure, was on the 16-footers. I think that is on the 14-footers, this one on the left. The windshield bracket, or for the center bracket, is behind the cavitation plate. And the side brackets are to the right there. The exhaust uh, elbow, the strut castings, and the castings for the rudders are there. And then this boat here is a 19, uh, 1962 Hafer. Uh, it was uh, completed uh, after John Hafer's death. The boat hull was actually finished by in 1955. However, when I spoke with the original owner's grandson, the boat had, this boat did not have a deck on it at all. Uh, this boat, when I got it, caused me to wonder what was going on because when I looked at the hull registration number, it was a 62. And when I was researching the motor that was in it, it turned out to be a 48. 47, I can't remember exactly. And that caused me to track down the owner 
who had been who had since passed away. This boat had been traded off by that person for a more modern boat. And I found out that the boat actually is what I would describe as a kitted boat, similar to what the term is used in, in the trucking industry when they rebuild a wreck and buy a whole new frame and, and cab and so forth. This boat, we had a tremendous storm in June of, 20, of uh, 1962, and I don't remember exactly what day, but I remember we, we had, I think, approximately 11, 12 inches of rain overnight. And the lake in front of our house went up 23 inches overnight. And this boat, owner, the owner of this boat was, lived on Spirit Lake, on the east side of Spirit Lake. And the east side of both lakes, so Boji and Spirit Lake, took the brunt of the damage. It got the brunt of the damage that was done in that storm. The original boat that had all the components for this one came from ended up on the rocks. And so the original owner went to Hafer and they had all, and they took all the components out of the broken up boat and installed it in this boat. And it was used for a number of years. Uh, I don't remember when it was traded off, but sometime in the late 60s or early 70s. I didn't buy it until probably the mid 80s or so, probably 84, 85. At which time, one thing that's unusual about this boat is one of the one of the first boat I know the only boat built that did not have a plank deck. The original, by the time this one was put together, the fiberglass boats had become a pretty safe or commodity that was used, and the owner wanted something a little more modern looking. So it was originally finished, the sides and the red stripe. No, it's not, uh, the main white and the red stripe on the side, that was there. The boat originally had kind of a medium blue vinyl deck uh, with a raised um, king plank done in white vinyl. And the interior was blue. When we, when Jerry Deercup was restoring this boat for me, um, he suggested I put it back similar to a Chris Craft red and white racing. So that's why the boat looks the way it does today. This boat was built for the 19, our hull was built after 1951, and the original bash had, was cut with a round hole for the more modern gauge. And if you look just below the, below the gauge and above the, the uh, 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 the, I'm trying to the gear shift. There's a round filler here to fill in the hole, so that it would look normal with the original gauge in place. It was a, it's a user boat, and it was used up until I think 2007. At the last year, my hoist that I kept it in broke, and so I just I pulled it out of the water after that, and it hasn't made the uh, hasn't made the lake since. 